check out this ABB robotic arm behind me. I think it's the biggest concrete printer I've seen yet. My name is Jared Gross and I'm here at x in France where they've developed this concrete printing technology that's really unique. Their material is quite different from some of the other materials I've seen. It is still cool after the print. Their CEO, Alvin, was telling me it takes six hours for the curing process to really start when the material begins to heat up. They just printed this table and they're starting another one here. They've got eight of these to complete today, all in one go, continuously running material through the system. This table can be customized on a website where you can drag parameters to change the dimensions, the angles, the textures, and it's a really cool thing and way that you can check out the technology yourself at home. We're going to examine this technology, hear from their CEO about some of the different things they're working on, and look at the different things that make x a unique competitor in this space. Glad to have you here to show you around, showing what we are doing. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy to show you everything. At X3, what we have done since six years, so we try to push to develop a new tool for construction and precasters. We are from the architecture world, and why we have developed a com company is because um, we don't have today the solution to build what we are growing and we say that maybe we need a new tool so that's why we, we start to design a tool which is useful for us and we can manage to have less concrete used for construction and have tailor-made design at a lower cost so that's where we started and today what we are providing it's an ecosystem with services uh, around our technology and we don't we are not just selling the technology but we are more creating an ecosystem where you have library of solution where you have certified pieces and where we help uh, our partner so constructor precaster um, to realize what they need for their project so it could be walls, could be artificial reefs, could be furniture, and we push the same, we put the same efforts to be able to realize those kind of pieces, but with high quality, uh, with productivity, and that's where we are working uh, on research to have the best technology, but also on what we name studio to have the best um, quality of print, but this best way of printing if you need to put less or more material at some space to make the right certification and also with creating this ecosystem we want to have local printer all over the world to be sure that what we are printing is uh, as close as possible from the site um, and after to have an exchange between Japan, Dubai, United States, France that's where we have facility today with some partners um, in China now. Um, and we think that what can travel is the pieces because they're concrete, but all the knowledge we are building and we are creating with our partner, we want to share it and to exchange between all our partners. That's how we we have made the company and we are pushing today to go further and higher and more quality, more security, more better construction with lower footprint emission. In fact, when we started like uh, six years ago, we have worked on clay and concrete. Uh, so this, those are the two main materials we are doing, but the main one is concrete because it's more relevant today for construction you have everything in place. So, as you see here, we have concrete with uh, aggregates, but they are small ones, they are 3 mm, but that makes us able uh, to reduce the CO2 emission of our concrete. And that could be interesting for uh, large projects like bridge or uh, large post or beam, etc. Uh, but we also have material with fine aggregates if you want to work for furniture. Are really fine elements.
us. Uh, we also are creating clay, so we have changed also the technology to be sure that maybe it's able to print clay and those clay are uh, also with accelerating agents, so we control the setting time of the clay, so that makes more industrial process of printing uh, low footprint emission material. But the problem now is like for clay, we need to, to push for regulation and to work out because it will never have the same strength as concrete. So as we imagine it, it's every material has its, its place in the construction industry. You are not going to print bridge in clay, but at some point if you need to make some molds that will dissolve clay could be really interesting. And also today we have worked with Saint Gobain uh, to print plaster. So we are really printing plaster because that could make lots more sense if you want to have separation of walls, insulation with really light uh, elements. Um, so we have work, we have developed uh, plaster 3D printing, and everything is possible with the same machinery we have developed. So that's really interesting and really important for us. One machinery to print a lot of different elements. So today what we are proposing is much more like hardware, software solution with whole of services around it. Software to make the calculation about the pieces you are printing, a full library of elements we have already done and we are pushing to put more elements inside the library. So we make a platform of connecting every single facility we have with our partner to make them able to exchange their knowledge, their learning and also we are here to, to put more elements on this platform so they will develop faster and have new projects really faster. So it's not just selling printers, it's more creating an ecosystem and pushing for regulation and bringing new solution for them. Also wanted to, to bring the, the idea of quality and uh, finishing uh, we are because we, we are talking a lot uh, with some architect constructors and we are learning from them what they need and what they, what they need to push and most of the point was the quality of the layer so what we have done since a lot of time is to push to have really regular layers and to be sure that every time we print we choose if we want which thickness we want with uh, larger of the layers and also to work with the texture we have done one of the first texture we'll see everywhere with uh, some bench we have done with uh, studio 7.5 which, which have worked on them we are pushed also for other texture but some of them want also to have some finishing so for the finishing, we say, okay, you can have coating on it. Uh, also, it's interesting with coating is you can protect the concrete. Um, and for other projects we have done quite recently, it's milling. So we are printing and uh, three hours after printing, directly in the same process, we mill. And that makes us able to have really smooth surfaces, even better than coating or even better when you, than when you print and you try to to smooth during the print, that's something rough. But with milling, it's if you want to have really high-end finishing or even drawing, it's possible. And because we are printing on the same robot, printing and milling, it could be directly after the print without any recalibration, anything. You just jump and mill. So that's one of the solutions. We have a lot of different solutions we are pushing. And what we do here is to push, to try, to develop the solution and after that makes us able to propose to constructor or precaster some option if they want to push and we don't just give as I said the solution hardware software but we also give the library so for example we give a piece where you also have a toolpath integrated for milling so you will just have to take the whole package and not just have to redo what we have already done. We are like a center of R&D and we make all the effort to be sure that constructor will just use the tool and will not have to develop what we are already learning. Here's like quite a simple example of how it's working. So 
since we start, uh, what we are pushing the most is B component 3D printing. Uh, B component 3D printing is having uh, liquid concrete, like with a lot of time before setting, maybe two hours, three hours, so that makes you able to be able to manage if you want to stop to print, start again, and you have plenty of time to want to, to fine tune. And after it's pumped up to the head, so we have one first box which is uh, here, which name uh, Xfeed, it's pushing the concrete up to the head, everything is connected, automatic, keeping the rheology moving, and when it goes to the head, in the head we control the quantity of concrete we want to depose, so that makes us able to accelerate or decelerate during the print, and we have some additives directly inside if you want to change the rheology of the setting time. So that makes us able, if you have like columns that go really fast, we will put more additives to make sure that it go faster, and if we have something really long, we put less additives. So that should make you have a real control over the concrete, and you are not going to be to need to change your concrete every time if you want to move one piece or another, like to change the setting, because the setting is controlled with the additives. Um, that's also possible because on our technology we are pushed to have a lot of sensors. So if we have pressure, temperature, humidity, uh, torque, couple, etc. So we exactly know what's happening inside the concrete during every step of the preparation. For example, if you, we see that um, it's too warm, we see that concrete is changing inside the tank with the shearing it, so we can manage to in advance, change the quantity of the accelerating agent to adapt because the, the concrete is a little bit changing and we want to have the same quality, so we will change and adapt it. So that's fine tuning, it's possible because we have a lot of sensors inside our technology and we have automatized everything. Uh, this is one of the projects we have done with uh, Puria Gravia, and uh, this is a concrete from Vika, um, where we have certified. Uh, all the elements, and that's something we are really pushing on. It's not, um, it's not we, we don't have just print and say, okay, that's a good resistance, we can ship it, but we have to go more deeper inside all the detail about uh, the quantity of the additive, the temperature of the concrete, uh, which type of positioning, which type of layer you are making. So that's really, really important to, to push and to understand all of this if you want to have good certification. So that's where we go, and in France, that's where we need to, to go to, to be sure to certify it well. If I can speak more about the project, that's something we, we have imagined. It's like separating standard elements with 3D printing elements. Because for us, it makes no sense to 3D print something that could be um, made with classic construction elements. So all the straight wall and all the design have been made like this. Half of the house is made with straight wall, standard elements, adapt, put on site. And the other half, with where you have connection with the, the windows, etc., with complex windows, are made with 3D printing and which are curved. And that makes us able to have a house um, adapt to the needs, adapt to the site, adapt to the way of living, but also to reduce the cost. Because the point is not to, to 3D print to 3D print something, but to 3D print to bring value to, for example, the house is here. Uh, also, we are not printing on site because we want to control the safety, control the quality, uh, and for the quality, you need to control the air, the humidity. And if you want to be reliable but productivity, you can change and move your three printer every time with adding uh, something covering everything. So what we have done is we have printed in one month. Uh, every day we printed one or two or three walls. We three print. We, have, we put them on truck and they assemble it in less than a day. They have like three or four walls. I don't remember exactly the numbers, but. It was like Legos you were bringing, putting on site, and it was finished. So it was really efficient, and we really think that precast industry is really great for automation, quality, safety, etc. And on site, they are here to really 
put what's happening in design before. That also helps to have exactly what you have designed. So we have a full flow of data from design to production, and you are sure that somewhere it's not breaking the conception line and breaking the, the, the codes you are doing. So if you have design from design to production exactly what you have made, you are sure that it's going to be good quality and good control over the, the print and the, over the construction side. This print X Tree is doing today is for a furniture project. So they want the layers to be absolutely perfect. They have no tolerance for error. The one here went really well. So you can see all the lines are extremely consistent and there's no visible flaws. With this print in the middle, they had some change in the material consistency because of differences in pressure during the print. This led to the second to last layer sagging a little bit over the edge, which is barely noticeable to the untrained eye, but unacceptable for this client of x -tree. So they stopped the print there, and they're now restarting it to the left to maintain this perfect layer quality standard that they've set. Each of these elements being printed is a slightly different model based off the same parametric design that has sliders to adjust things like the texture. So over here you can see a large extrusion from the center which gives you like a beaded or weave pattern whereas this one is more consistent and a tighter layer size so you end up with more of a smoother look. Here you can see a demonstration of how Xtree uses variable layer height in single prints. So here the layer height is maybe three or four millimeters high, whereas it doubles in this section to accommodate this loop that comes out of the main portion of the element. Having this interlocking system makes it a much stronger connection and it makes the layers look extremely smooth and consistent. Here they've demonstrated a textured wall. Not only is there texture on the exterior of the surface, but here inside you can see this alternating pattern that gives beneficial thermodynamic properties, improving the insulatory value of the print. This was done with a very fine layer height, which gives you a higher resolution in your printability. Check out how tall this printed column is behind me. They were able to do this entire thing in just one print with their massive robotic arm over there built by ABB.